AMD has won gamers over with its Ryzen series of CPUs. This CPU lineup marked AMD's return to form and, more importantly, provided Intel with some much-needed competition by offering higher core counts at lower prices. In short, Ryzen CPUs are now the go-to option for many gamers. And to be frank, it doesn't seem like this is going to change anytime soon. It's taken Intel a long time to bounce back and start offering specs that are on par with AMD's. By this time, the Ryzen series has picked up momentum and it's just going with it. That's why the topic of today's video isn't whether or not you should get a Ryzen CPU, but which one it should be. So stay tuned because all of the info you'll ever need to know about Ryzen CPUs is coming right up. Much like the Intel Core series, the Ryzen lineup is divided into the following brands. Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, and Ryzen 9. These numbers don't actually mean a thing, by the way. Intel's marketing team just figured out that 3, 5, 7, and 9 sounds a lot better than 1, 2, 3, and 4. And AMD just copied this. Ryzen 3 CPUs are affordable solutions that offer the lowest core counts. That said, these CPUs are still perfectly capable of running the latest AAA titles. Pair them with mid-range graphics cards like the GTX 1660 and some speedy RAM, and you could be running Assassin's Creed Odyssey just shy of 60fps on ultra-high settings. Bump the settings down a bit and a stable 60fps becomes quite doable. That said, the best value is still found in the Ryzen 5 CPUs. These are mid-range solutions that strike the best balance between price and performance. More importantly, Ryzen 5 CPUs are the more future-proof option for reasons we'll list when we discuss the individual specs. The Ryzen 7 CPUs are quite pricier than their Ryzen 5 cousins, making them less cost-efficient. This is offset by the fact that you don't really need a Ryzen 7 CPU unless you're building a high-end PC or a workstation. These are performance-oriented CPUs that far exceed the requirements of most gamers. And finally, we have Ryzen 9 CPUs. We'll be honest, you don't really need a Ryzen 9. Not unless you're building a PC with the new RTX 3080 graphics card. These graphics cards may have been released at super consumer-friendly prices, but $500 for a graphics card is still a little bit too much for most gamers. Plus, the capacitors in these graphics cards have been causing some serious issues lately, so perhaps it's best to wait for the dust to settle on the new Nvidia 3000 series graphics cards before committing to them. In any case, the point here is that Ryzen 9 CPUs are simply overkill unless you're making the most high-end gaming PC ever. There are also Ryzen Threadripper CPUs, but these don't have much in common with the standard Ryzen lineup. We prefer to think of them as their own series, just like the Epic CPUs. If you'd like to hear what the Threadripper and Epic CPUs are all about and how they compare to the standard Ryzen lineup, check out the link in the description, it'll take you to a video that's all about this topic. For now, let's take a look at CPU specs you should be familiar with and how impactful they are. As we've already mentioned, core counts are what brought AMD back from death and obscurity and what propelled the company into greatness. Just looking back at what the standard for core counts was in the years prior to the Ryzen lineup gets us shivering. At the time of this video's release, the Ryzen 3 CPUs feature 4 cores and 8 threads. The Ryzen 5 CPUs come with 6 cores and 12 threads. The Ryzen 7 CPUs pack 8 cores and 16 threads. And the Ryzen 9 CPUs sit comfortably at 12 cores and 24 threads. Except for the Ryzen 9 3950X, which features a grand total of 16 cores and 32 threads. Now, core counts are one of the most marketable specs CPUs have precisely because they're so quantifiable. Everyone knows that 6 cores is better than 4 cores, even if they don't know what it's better for. The short answer is multitasking. Each core and thread can only do one task at a time, so having access to more cores and threads enables your PC to juggle more tasks at any given time. But how impactful are cores and threads really? And more importantly, how impactful are they for gaming? Well, as we've mentioned, you can still get by on CPUs that have only 4 cores. This is why the Ryzen 3 CPUs are genuinely a good option for budget builds. The main reason we don't recommend using them for mid-range builds as well is because they lack future-proofing. In 2020, the sweet spot for core counts is 6 cores. That's why we recommend Ryzen 5 CPUs to all gaming PC builders. 
Ryzen 7 CPUs with their 8 cores and 16 threads are simply overkill for now. Another hugely important CPU spec, as far as performance is concerned, is the clock speed. This specification, measured in gigahertz, tells you how many operations a single core can carry out in a second. So the higher the clock speed, the better the performance. Although having the CPU operate at higher clock speeds will also result in more heat generation. When it comes to gaming, the clock speed is arguably more important than the core count, which is why Intel CPUs still tend to win out in terms of in-game performance. The latest Ryzen 5 CPUs feature base clock speeds of anywhere between 3.6 and 3.9 GHz, while their boost clock ranges from 3.9 to 4.7 GHz. Now here's the thing. Unlike the Intel Core CPUs, all Ryzen CPUs can be overclocked, meaning you can set them to operate at clock speeds that are higher than the normal. Conversely, their overclocking potential is lower than that of an unclocked high-end Intel Core model. So if you're looking to do some serious overclocking, maybe don't get a Ryzen CPU. But this isn't a problem for most users. Why? Well, overclocking just isn't that big of a deal for casual gamers. Overclocking voids the warranty and it can cause the system to become unstable. What's more, the performance boost you can get through overclocking typically isn't all that noticeable, especially not for gaming. It's more of a hobby that some PC enthusiasts are into than something that's necessary or even advised. If all you're interested in is gaming and you're about to buy a new Ryzen CPU, then you absolutely do not need to overclock your CPU. All modern CPUs are good enough to run all of the AAA titles out of the box. Next up, we have a spec that isn't all that popular among gamers, and that is cache memory. Simply put, this is a small amount of memory that the CPU uses to store important data that it may need to access quickly. To say that cache memory doesn't play a role in the overall performance and stability of a CPU wouldn't exactly be right, but we can safely say that it doesn't matter for gaming. And since most Ryzen CPUs come with similar cache sizes anyway, this is a spec you can safely overlook when deciding on the right CPU for your build. The Ryzen lineup isn't comprised entirely of CPUs, it also features a couple of APUs. What are APUs? We have a whole video dedicated to this question that you should look up if you're interested in the long and detailed answer. The short version is this. APU is just a fancy term for a processor that features the CPU and GPU on the same die. In other words, APUs come with integrated graphics and can be used in builds without a discrete graphics card. And with the recent advancements in the APU field, these integrated graphics can finally be used for some true gaming. Granted, builds with APUs will never reach FPS counts of builds with discrete graphics cards, but this is to be expected. Nevertheless, they are still capable of reaching perfectly playable frame rates. You may have to lower the resolution or graphics in some games to get there, but you can get there. For example, both the Ryzen 3 3200G and the Ryzen 5 3400G can run Fortnite at well over 60 FPS at 72p on medium graphics. So if you're working with a really tight budget, this may be an answer. Just remember that APUs have lower core counts than regular Ryzen CPUs, so if you're not planning to make use of the integrated graphics, then getting an APU can be detrimental to overall performance. Compatibility is one of the most important factors to keep in mind when shopping for a new CPU. After all, not every CPU is compatible with every motherboard. The two components need to use the same socket if they are to work together. Here's the good news. Excluding the Threadripper models, all Ryzen CPUs use the same AM4 socket, which makes our lives so much easier when building. However, not all chipsets support all CPUs, so you still need to make sure that the CPU you want to get is compatible with the motherboard's chipset. For a list of all of the AM4 chipsets, you should check out the link in the description. You've probably noticed over the course of this video that certain CPUs we've mentioned end in letters rather than numbers. When this is the case, the letter can tell us a lot about the CPU in question. Models that end in an X, like the Ryzen 5 3600X, feature a higher clock speed and better overclocking potential than others without the X designation. These CPUs still don't measure up to the unlocked Intel Core models in terms of their overclocking potential, in case you were wondering. Models that end in a G, 
like the Ryzen 5 3400G, are APUs. There are some other letter designations as well, but these are very rarely used. For an explanation of what they mean, please refer to the article linked in the description. Lastly, we need to ask ourselves whether getting the newest CPU is even necessary. And surprisingly, the answer is yes, at least in most cases. This isn't to say that you need to upgrade your CPU every time a better one comes out. Far from it. A good CPU can easily last you 5 years before it starts to struggle running the latest games. But if you already need to buy a CPU, then getting the newest one is often your best bet. The thing is, CPU prices don't depreciate all that much with age, so what little money you'd save by opting for an older CPU often isn't indicative of the performance you're losing out on. This is under the assumption that you're purchasing the CPU from the store, even though it's a last-gen model. As for purchasing secondhand CPUs, that's a different matter entirely. This can be worth it from a financial standpoint, especially as CPUs are some of the safer PC components to get used, but you should still follow all of the guidelines we've prescribed in our video on buying secondhand hardware. Additionally, you should look at how big of a performance gap there is between the current and last gen CPUs. The third generation of Ryzen CPUs offered a sizable performance boost when compared to second gen Ryzen CPUs. But this isn't the case with the second and first generation of Ryzen CPUs. The fourth generation Ryzen CPUs that are set to release shortly will utilize the new Zen 3 architecture so if you aren't in a hurry, it's best to wait for the reviews to come out before committing to a 3000 series CPU. On the other hand, we also know that this will be the last generation of Ryzen CPUs to utilize the AM4 socket. So if future-proofing is something you value a lot, you might want to skip the Ryzen 4000 CPUs and wait for the Ryzen 5000 CPUs. In conclusion, different Ryzen CPUs will appeal to different users for different requirements. So there's no one answer that we can give that will hold true for everyone. However, we can generalize. And in general, the Ryzen 5 CPUs stand out as the most cost-effective of the bunch. They have enough cores to run all of the latest AAA titles smoothly and some left over for the sake of future-proofing. And unless you're getting a high-end GPU, they won't cause a bottleneck either. So for most users, the right pick will be Ryzen 5. But for those on a tight budget, Ryzen 3 still presents great value, as do the new AMD APUs. Just make sure not to get an APU if you're already going to buy a discrete graphics card for your PC. Ryzen 7 and especially Ryzen 9 CPUs are more geared towards professionals than gamers. But a Ryzen 7 will not feel out of place in a high-end gaming rig either. As for which generation of Ryzen CPUs you should opt for, you can never go wrong with the latest gen products. Those who skipped the Ryzen 2000 series and patiently waited for the Ryzen 3000 series certainly got their money's worth. But not every generational gap is going to be this huge. And that about does it for this video. We hope you found it helpful. You can let us know if you have by liking it, sharing it with friends, and leaving a comment. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so that you never miss a new video. We upload a new one every week, so it shouldn't be long now until the notification bell rings up. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.